hope y'all are having a blessed day. It has been pouring all day long, and the last 48 hours we have gotten about 9 inches of rain. Welcome to the Southern Appalachians. We are a temperate rainforest here, and we get more rainfall than the Pacific Northwest. So welcome to my mountain. Welcome to the rain. I absolutely love it. We did need it. My creek is raging like a rapid. And even though it's been raining, God has been good to us. And it's been a great day. We are here with our next little project. And me and Mr. Dinky, oh, there he goes. And it is not a stuffed potato chip block. It is going to be something different. And I am calling this chickens in the corner. I have about 112 blocks here. I need 110. And this is, these are five inch blocks. And this fabric is Riley Blake. This is Riley Blake Designs. And this fabric is called Hush Hush. And it's called, it's pattern number C11175. And it has really cool salvages but those are too small for me to use. We are using every last scrap of this fabric that I had. I don't know how many of this is. This is five inch squares and there's 112. You do the math, cause mm mm. So in addition to having 112 of those, I have you know, lots and lots and lots of these. I will insert a photo here of the sample quilt top that I did in EQ. And we are doing wonky triangles in one corner only. And the entire quilt is going to be that. So we are going to take our beautiful five inch squares and we are going to fit a wonky triangle in one corner. And this is going to be speed quilting because we are chain piecing this through the machine. We will cut them all apart and we will do the trimming. And then we are going to sew them all together. I needed 120 for the layout that I did, 10 by 12. I didn't have enough fabric for that, so I had to change it from 10 by 12 layout to a 10 by 11. So it's going to be a baby quilt. These will end up being four and a half inch finished. We're just going to do these wonky corners. When we go to sew the rows, and the columns together and all of that, we're going to be webbing it. So the entire top is going to end up being one piece. It's all going to have all little threads holding it together. So as a reminder, I would invite you to please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would really, really, really help me out. It would help get my content out to other people that may enjoy it. Ring the little bell to get notified when I post new videos. And if you have any desire to have exclusive content, exclusive patterns that only you as a subscriber of my coffee can get access to, I invite you to come on over to coffee. That's ko-fi.com forward slash 70 acres studio, or you can just type my URL in, which is 70 acres It'll take you right over there. I have several membership levels and I also have a shop over there with lots and lots and lots of stuff in it. And including, including this beautiful piece here, I still have to quilt that. So that's not there yet. I also do have Kawandi table runner kits available for sale over there. And that's a real fun one. And it's got lots and lots of instructions with lots of photos. And there's a video that goes along with it. So if you're new to quilting and you enjoy doing a little bit of handwork, this is very, very easy. It requires no accuracy whatsoever. And it's done, so you sew it together using embroidery floss, which is included in the kit. And if you think you might enjoy making that, 
You could also turn that table runner into a small purse. You could hang it on the wall. On the, it would be a nice size for the back of a door. Also, I would love to have you join my Discord server. That is, if you are on Discord, just look for the channel called 70 Acre Studio, and you can reach out to me with questions. You can share photos of your projects with me. If you have, if you need help, if you have an old vintage sewing machine and you have a question, I'm more than willing to help you out. We're building a wonderful, loving, sharing community over there, and I would love to have you. We are starting with our pile of squares there, and I have a pile of scraps here for my triangles. And what we're going to do is we are going to lay our scrap right sides together and then we are going to fold it until we know we have coverage okay and then i am finger pressing a little line and i'm going to sew just on the right side of that line so i know that when i flip this over i will get full coverage and i will take this one out just to show you what i've got and then then i will begin chain piecing. So we take this, we finger press, and we can see that we clearly have lots of coverage. So now I can go trim that down later. But for right now, we don't need to do that. We're taking another square, and once again, you, and you don't have to use the exact size of this square. If you want to make a real tiny triangle, you just fold it up like that. And then once again, we're going to sew just to the right of that line. Now this is going to be a skinny one. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to go like that. Okay, and I'll flip it over and show you what I've got going on here. Okay, so we're just going to give that a little press. And then we're going to sew just to the right of that line. And I'm just going to fling this over here and show you that we in fact do have coverage. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to make a triangle that is so small that it's going to get sucked up in the seam allowance. And again, if you don't like your if you don't like the patch you're using, then don't worry about it. Just toss it aside and grab another one. And as far as scraps for your chickens, I would say don't use anything that's really light colored that matches or would blend in with your background square. All right, let's see what we're doing here with this one. This is going to be a kind of a thin one. So what you can do is just go like this. And so long as it covers, so just test fit and make sure that you have coverage. Okay, and then slide it under the machine. And if you want a long, thin triangle, you just angle it like so and once again so just to the right of your line that way you know you have coverage ta-da one whole quilt top right here there is my handy dandy little chain piece cutter. We are just going to clip all of these apart. We're going to iron them and then we're going to trim them and then we will come back and start sewing them together. If you are new to quilting and you don't have a stash, go to your local thrift store and look in the men's dress shirts and the women's shirts and dresses and skirts and look for 100% cotton or linen. Also check out the bedding section. Sheets have a lot of fabric in them. Pillowcases have a lot of fabric in them, especially if you unpick the hem. And there's a lot of fabric to be had. It's probably in like a men's large dress shirt. You can get probably three quarters of a yard or a yard of fabric, maybe more. I think the easiest way to trim them is to just put the ruler on in the back and trim this off. And if you do not wish 
to trim the back, so you don't have to. You can leave that on if you wish. I'm going to take it off so there's a little less bulk. And you're just gonna line up seam line with a quarter inch mark on your ruler. Okay, so there is one of the blocks, our entire quilt top right here. There are 110 blocks for me. I only had 100 and I got 112 five inch squares out of my background fabric. So that's all I had. So I have 110 and it's going to be 11 rows of 10 blocks each. So I am left-handed and I sew from left to right. It really does not matter. What you wanna do is take your 10 blocks and you just wanna make sure that there's some difference between them. The, the triangles are different sizes at different angles, different colors. You don't wanna have like five of these in the same row. I have put pins in them. This is row number one for me. So I'm going to put this aside and I am going to take take my blocks and put them together like this. There are no seams to worry about. All right, I'm gonna tell you, this is my plan of action. I am going to sew row one, blocks one and two. Row two, blocks one and two. Row three, blocks one and two. All the way down to row 11, blocks one and two. That is how I'm going to keep track of it. And if we sew the quilt top together by column, it will all get put together in a web fashion. At the end of it, the entire quilt top will be held together with the little strings in between the seams. All right, so I've done row one. Now I'm going to take row number one and I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm putting it on the other side of my table. Row number two, I am taking the first two blocks. I'm putting my pin back in here and I'm placing row number two on top of row number one. And now I am taking these two and sewing them together. This is row number three, blocks one and two. Putting the pin back in row number three, putting it on top of the other two rows, sewing these together. Just one quarter inch, that's all you need to worry about. Row four, blocks one and two. Putting the pin back in it and putting it on top of row three. Block one, block two. Next row. Block one, block two. This is the final row, and we're taking blocks one and two, and once again, we're placing block uh, row 11 on top of the others. And that it is upside down, so when I flip the whole pile right side up, row one will be at the top again. And now we take this off the machine. This here one is row one. So I am taking a pin and just kind of sticking it in there. So now we have our rows again, and this is row one, and we need block number three. Putting that upside down at the side of my table. And now this is block one, because I got a pin here, block two, block three. We're sewing block number three to block number two. Now, do not cut your threads. Do not take anything off the machine. Unfold row number two. And now we're taking block three from row number two. And now we're taking this and we're turning it upside down, putting it on top of the first one. This is block number three. So it goes on to block number two. Okay, so if you can see this and this, it's called webbing. So those are together. Now I'm taking row number three, blocks one and two, row number three, block three, putting the pin back in this, turning it upside down, putting it on top of the last row, lining these up. Row number four, block number three. Are you starting to see where I'm going with this? If we were sewing, we couldn't sew the rows together and use webbing because you'd have to sew the whole row together 
and take it out of the machine and then sew row number two together, take it out of the machine and then sew rows one and two together. So this saves all that time and effort. We're sewing in columns and by sewing in columns we can just increase the size of those columns as we go down. So this is, this is row number three and here we have blocks one, two, and three. This is row number four, and we have blocks one and two. Here's row four. Here's block number three. Putting the pin back, turning it upside down, putting it over there. There we go. That is how you sew a quilt top together using webbing. And this is particularly useful if you have spent a very long time at the design wall or on the floor or on the table, laying out all of these blocks to get things just right. Now you know that they're going to stay just the way you had them because you have pinned every row together and you're sewing every row one block at a time and you're keeping the rows in order and you're keeping the blocks in order. So now we just march forward in this manner. We go all the way down to row 11. Row 11 for me, it depends on how much background fabric you've got. Okay, row 11, block number three. Now we take this out of the machine and we pull it back up and now we start again, okay? So there we go. And now you can't screw this up because they're all attached. So you know that block number four goes right to here. That's starting to sound, yep. Looky there. <laughs> Bob and chicken has got me again. So we just simply back up and I'm going to put row five, row four, and I have lost the block for row three. Let me go retrieve that off the floor. And we know even if this falls on the floor right now, we are perfectly okay because we have a pin in number one. So that belongs over here. And we have to go back to row four once we change the bobbin. And what do we do every time we change the bobbin? We, we oil our machine and we don't have to stop. Like I said, I have to start back here. So I'm just gonna pick up right here where I left off and then continue the webbing. So everything will stay tied together just the way it's supposed to. So we are going to open up our bobbin. We're going to get our handy dandy little brush and we're going to get the lint out. My goodness gracious. And while you should never blow into a new computerized machine that you cannot open up and access. On this one, you can blow if you want. And now we are putting a drop or two of oil there. I'm gonna put one there, one there, one there. Give her a little love. She treats you very well, so you take care of her as well. Oil your machine. Now we pick up right where we left off. This is row 11, block number four. And now we're going to take it off the machine again and go all the way back up to the first row and start block number five. I am going to continue on in this fashion and I will meet up with you again for the last block. Okay, we are here with nine of the blocks in every row. So we are on the last column and I have those blocks right here. See how nice this just stays together? The whole top is all figured out already. This is the 10th block on the 11th row, the last block. Now you don't clip any threads, but this is gonna be cumbersome over at the ironing table. So I don't want to bring you over there and confuse you with what's going on. All right, this is row one. What I'm gonna do, is I am going to iron row number one in one direction, all the seams in one direction. Row number two, I'm going to iron in the other direction. Row number three is gonna go back, row number four, row number five, etc., etc. 
And what that will do is it will lay your seam allowances in opposite directions so that your seams and your intersections will nest. And it will be very easy to get them sewn together. Here it is, all sewn together. So all of your blocks are going the right way and you can't get the blocks or the rows confused. Row one, row two, row three, etc. So I have pressed them in opposite directions. So when we put our seams together, they nest. And if you feel a gap, that's telling you that the seams are not butt up against each other. They can't be too far off because there's still thread holding them together. When you are doing this, the only thing that you are concerned about is sewing an accurate quarter inch seam from this point to this point and getting this seam sewn down nicely. You don't care about anything else because it's all sewn together already. It can't go anywhere. You can't make a mistake. Just make sure that you're not sewing over anything that shouldn't be sewn over and make sure you get the quarter inch seam there. The only thing that you've got to worry about is this next junction, okay? And they are going in opposite directions. I can feel that they are not all tangled up and I have to I have to fluff a bit here because there's a lot of stuff floating around. That I can feel is not on where it needs to be. There it is. And if you have any fullness, hold the piece up and let the machine pull it in between the presser foot and the feed dogs, that slack will be taken up. So don't be worried about this. It's already sewn together, as you can see. You can't really get it screwed up. And even if a couple of your, your strings had to be or broke or whatever, don't worry about it because you've got plenty others that are still sewn together so you know what's going on and you know where it's going. If there's any fullness, I can feel that there's a gap there. And you want to make sure that you're not running things over. And then you just start sewing. Lay the intersection down. And so Do the next one. I don't cut these. Some people cut them. But if you cut them, in my opinion, you're going to have a big mess on your hands. So I don't cut them. I leave them right, right together. Now you can use pins if you like to make sure all your intersections are together, but me and pins don't get along. I end up getting hurt, so I don't use them and you don't really need them. The first row is done. So now we just go back. Oops, I'm sorry. Go back to the beginning. We've done one and two together. You can see how lovely they look and now we're doing the same thing with rows two and three. Okay, we're just lifting these little threads here up out of the way. Okay, I can feel that that's nice and secure. I'm gonna tug a little bit there to line up the edge. So it's not, not scary at all because you're only dealing with one intersection at a time. Again, if you have, let's see if I can show you this. All right, stay put. I know you're upside down. All right, so I have that steam match. And you can see that there is some slack on the bottom one. So just sticking my hand under here and I'm just pulling that under. But you can see the little loop there. See, that's gone. All that slack disappears and you're done. Rows two and three together so you can see how it's going, the seams are lining up a little bit and you know what, if they're not lined up perfectly, as I always say, from the back of a galloping horse in a heavy fog at two o'clock in the morning, you won't notice it. So don't worry about it. Do not worry about it. Just continue to pick up your slack and untangle the next two rows that you're working on. So row three, row four. So flip it over match up your edges there. So I think you get the idea. We're pretty near there. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I am going to sew all the way down until I get to the very last row and then I'll turn the camera back on. All right, I am on the last row 
It has gone together very smoothly up until this point. So we'll see if we can come across the finish line without any issues. It is three o'clock in the morning. The whole process is much more enjoyable when you think about only having to worry about one intersection at a time. I will say that if you are working with smaller blocks, I would advise you to do one row sewing in this direction and the next row sewing in the other direction so that there isn't a slant to your quilt top. I think I'm going to be okay on that because I've done the webbing and I am matching every single every single intersection. I did a watercolor quilt that with the two two inch squares and it is very lopsided. I have to take it apart and fix it. Okay, last one. Done. It's been quite a while since we've seen a full quilt or quilt top sewn together by me. And it is now 3.30 in the morning. Here we are and we have 10 blocks by 11 rows. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you find the little, the little something something. There's always one. There's always some sassy chicken that just doesn't want to go where the others are going. And as you can see, I'm really tired. So the center of this quilt did not get ironed. I just kind of ironed around the edges because um, I'm exhausted. But I think it's adorable and I just, I just love the movement in it. And I love all the different colors and all the crazy triangles. And what I'll be doing is, I have some of these Riley Blake uh, jelly rolls left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out some of them and I'm gonna use them to do a border and then it will be up on my site. And I'm really quite tickled with it. I really do like it a lot. Boy, my hair's a mess. <laughs> I need to get to the hair salon real quick. Goodness gracious. <laughs> that and it's 3.30 in the morning. So I want to thank you all for watching. I would kindly ask that you hit that subscribe button and that you hit the little bell so you get notified when I post new videos. Please do consider coming over to Coffee and signing up in one of my membership groups for exclusive access to patterns and other things classes, anything, and there's going to be more things coming. I do hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you will give it a try. There's really no pattern needed. You're just going to be taking your five inch squares and making wonky triangles on one corner. And then, you know, if you, if you, if you are, if you want to be wild and crazy, where did it go? <laughs> There's always that one chicken that doesn't want to do what everybody else is doing. If you have chickens, you know what I'm talking about. There's always one that zigs when everybody else is zagging. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to try and get some sleep. So I want to thank you for watching. I want you all to have a very, very blessed day, a very blessed week. I love you all so very much. You mean the world to me. Your comments just make my day. And I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio with our next little project real soon. Not sure what it's going to be yet. You all take good care of yourselves. I love you all very, very much. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.